in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries by recalling to mind our sins and be sorry. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel and Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in the ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve. The gods your father served beyond the river, or the god of Amorites in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord, our God, who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of the state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. 
Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, just as Christ is head of the church. He himself the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of the body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are Spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. In 
in our readings for this weekend, we have seen from the first reading to the last, to the Gospel, how decisions, choices have to be made. In our first reading of today, Joshua presented to the people to renew the covenant. He explained to them what the covenant is and he asked them, do you want to be faithful to this covenant? The people's response to that proposition is that they have seen what the Lord has done. They have experienced the goodness of God. They have been loved by God. How can they walk away from God? So they chose to obey and follow God. The second reading of today, I think the most interesting of all, I think most of the hands of the husbands and wives are squeezed when those beautiful words are read. Like the husband squeezed the wife or just stared at the wife and said, Wives, you know, obey your husbands. See, that's scriptural. That has some biblical basis there. But then don't forget, don't tune out after that because before the end of the reading, it also says, Husbands, love your wives. So see, that's also biblical. So those are, it's a decision made. That when you said, when you get married, you say, I do. It's a decision you have to make. A decision that you are putting your life, your ambitions, your dreams, your entire self to your spouse through life. Until then, do you part? And in the gospel of today, we've seen how the Lord had given his disciples a choice. Most of them walked away because they said, This is too much. We cannot accept this. But then the Lord turned to his disciples, his apostles, and said, How about you? Are you giving to? He never forced them to follow him. He gave them a choice. What a beautiful response. Peter, the spokesperson of the entire decision. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. You have what we are seeking for. Why do we have to look elsewhere? Where we already found you. You know, all of these are just putting us into a good reflection about our daily lives, of the many choices we have to make. Some of the choices we make are easy. Like for instance, what are we gonna have for breakfast tomorrow? What are we gonna order today for my early bird special? Should I order dessert or not? There are two good choices today. What should I? Which I decide on the dress that you are wearing today. You kind of decide on that. What am I going to wear today? Is this the right tie for me? Is this the right jacket for me? Is this the shoes that I want to wear? Well, some spend so much time trying to make a decision of something so trivial, but makes the quickest decision of something that is life changing. We have to make sure that we balance those decisions the time we spend on it. Because choices that we make every day would have an effect on our lives, whether big or small. What you eat today might not affect you tonight, unless otherwise you eat a spoiled bread or something from your leftover is way out there in the very corner and you still want to try it because you have sentimental value on that food that has been there for like five weeks. <laughs> that does kind of dramatically affect your life five minutes after eating. But there are certain decisions that you make that don't really affect you really much. But then there are those decisions that you have to make sure that you really think about. We constantly be, be thinking of what I'm gonna do on this one. Think for instance, marriage. Marriage is something important. When you think about decisions of getting married, you just don't fall in love and then elope. 
after three days of meeting someone in a Facebook. You know, you, you don't do that. I mean, I met them online. We've been trading messages in our instant messages for three days, and I think I'm in love. I'm not going to listen to my children. Whatever they say, I'm already old. I'm 78. What more do I have to lose? I have to get this now or else it might not be there anymore. All of those things are decisions that are life-changing. You need to think about it. Am I really in love with a person? Is the person really in love with me? But here's one beautiful question you need to ask. Am I willing to make that person happy? I mean, that's one of those things that we need to consider in marriage, not only what will satisfy us, what will make us happy, but rather, are we ready? Are we equipped? Do we have that passion in us to be the best person for that person whom we will marry, whom we will spend the rest of our life with? It's an opposite question when you ask, will she be ready for me? No. That's already the key to being disappointed. Because you are already expecting it from someone. You have no power at all, nor control of what the other person feels, decides on, about you and your marriage. The only thing that you have the power is yours. Your decision, your actions, your thoughts, your passions. This is what you can control. And this is where you have to focus your attention in making that decision, such as merits, such as vocation, such as important career decisions in your life. These are very, very important that it comes from you because the succeeding actions after that will be based on your choice, on your decision, not theirs. How they will react to you is beyond your control. If you doubt them and expect that your love for them is based on how they would love you, you're doomed. You're definitely doomed. Because you have no control of how they will react to your love. But if you say to yourself, I will love that person until death do us part, you will be happy. Because your love emanates from yourself, from your decision. The other, the most important now that I wish to point out to all of us, among all the other decisions we make in life, is the decision about your soul. Our Lord offers us with a very beautiful proposition. And that proposition is, I will be your God. I will give you eternal life. I will do the best thing for you. Follow my will. That is, that is the proposition. Follow His will. Follow God's will. And what is His main commandment to all of us? That is His will. Love God with everything you have and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Those two are not a burden. For if we truly love, it is something that is satisfying. It is something that brings about happiness and joy in our lives if we truly love. So he asked us to love. What's difficult about that? What is, are we in the losing end of the statement? I don't think so. 
He offers us a win-win situation. First, you would have life eternal. Second, you can achieve it being happy, loving, because you would be in love. That is his proposition. And it's life-changing because it would take your entire life, your entire life. And that entire life is not only life on earth. It's not 70, 80, or 90 years for the lucky ones. It's eternity that we're looking at. So the question is this, are you going to live till? Are you one following? Do you want to follow me? Because if our decision is yes, I want to follow you to the very end, then that decision should be first a conscious decision. Oftentimes, we make decisions every day on what to do. That's why we commit mistakes. You say, how did I do that? I was just driving. I didn't mean to curse the other guy. I was just driving. He just cut me off. That's why I, I blurted it out. But you made a decision out of autopilot. You just reacted to it without even thinking about it. So the first criteria of really serious decision making is make a conscious decision about it. Think about it. Be sure you're aware of it. Aware of the consequences that will be happening after we make a decision. So make sure you're aware of it. So when I say, I wish to follow Christ, I am committed to follow Him. He would be my Lord and Savior. It should be a conscious decision. The second is that that decision is your own. To make sure it's your own. It's not being forced on you by anybody else. It should not even be. It should not even be because of fear. Oh, I have to follow Christ. I have to believe in Christ. I have to embrace Him as my Lord and Savior because I don't want to go to hell. That kind of decision is a bit more flaky. It's shaky. If you want a firm one, because I want to follow him, because I love him. Because I love him. Not that I follow him because he will give me riches. Not that I follow him because he will give me all and answer all my prayers. Because once you remove those incentives, would you still follow him? Like most other disciples would not. They walk away because they have their own expectations. If I follow you, Lord, then here is my condition. You have to do all of this for me. If you don't do this for me, I walk away. This is not negotiable. You have to cure my cancer. You have to make sure I have a perfect, happy life. Make sure that I'm not in pain. Nobody dies in my family, Lord. That's, that's one of the unconditional, I mean, non-negotiable items there. Lord, make sure I'm not sad, I don't cry, there's no poor, nothing of that sort. All my prayers to be answered within 24 hours, Lord. That's my condition, or I walk away. You know, therefore, our decision is not based on the real consequence of it, on the real reason for it. Our condition should be pure. And the purest of all our conditions is no other than love. I'll follow you, Lord, because of love. <clears throat> Last but not least, when we make a conscious effort, a purely, in, and mention it is pure, and it is our own decision, then we offer it all to God, that decision. Lord, it, this is yours now. It's not me anymore. It's yours. I will follow you wherever you lead me. And this is yours. And that's, that's a conscious 
choice. And that's the wise choice. In this Eucharist today, we will be meeting the Lord in Holy Communion. We will receive Him. And when the priest or the minister offers Him to you, He says, the body of Christ. Then we say, Amen. I know some of you will be tempted to say, Thank you. But the right way to say is, Amen. Why do we have to say that? Because there we, we affirm our commitment that from this time on, if I say amen and commit myself to you, I embrace everything that is about you. I embrace everything about you, not about me. I embrace what you stand for. I embrace everything that you believe. I embrace everything that you ask me to do. I embrace all the people that you love, even if I don't love them. I embrace it all because of you. That's when you say, Amen. When you receive communion. Totally, you would love everything about God. Everything about Jesus. And you would commit your very existence every single second of it so that you can find it. May we be blessed today and every day and every time we commit ourselves to Jesus. Please stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the oh. Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, right from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, unsubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified and their bodies pilot. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance to the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of Hebrew of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and the Lord of God, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world of God. Amen. Having listened to God's word, let us, with courage and faith, bring our prayers and petitions before Him. For the church, drawn from all nations and languages, may God richly bless us as we proclaim the fidelity and praise of the Lord to all peoples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in civil power and authority, may the Lord use their leadership to bring peace to our world and justice to those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those enduring trials and challenges in life, may they come to know the loving presence presence of God and support and compassion of the community of faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the young people in our faith community, may the light of God's grace guide their decision making. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our nation, that we may heed the gospel call to reform our lives by ending the practices of abortion, euthanasia, and capital punishment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have died, may they take their place at the eternal feast in the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for Jim O'Donovan, George Foote, and the deceased members of the Reagan and Atwell families for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Almighty and eternal Father, you call us to share the eternal life of your kingdom, trusting that your desire for us is mercy and steadfast love. We make our prayers with confidence and hope through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
The gift bearers today are Delia Amadeo and Evelyn Heber. The second collection today is for capital maintenance. the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift the hearts of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins, and by his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by setting down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that we may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave it thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which should be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Jim, George, and the deceased members of the Ragged and Atwell families, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they, who are united with your Son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, to the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. in our days, that with the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but at the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. 
and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Kindly open the inside black cover of your music hymnal. Together we pray the animal Christ. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, be me. Walk of the sight of Christ, wash me. Wash me, Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, conceal me. Do not permit me to be parted from you. From the evil of God, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me. And bid me come to you. To praise you to all our saints. Can you be seated? This weekend we have the men's retreat of the Christ Reduces Parish Retreat. And I would like to ask for your prayers that we frequently pray for them. And uh, continue to pray for uh, those that are facilitating the retreat uh, uh, this uh, weekend. And in September we will have the retreat for women. So may I ask Christina to come forward and invite the women. Uh, in the congregation for the upcoming Thank you, Father. And I'm going to be a millennial right now without my phone, sorry. So, <laughs> okay. My name is Christina Gallinari, and I'm here on behalf of the Christ Renews' Parish Women's Retreat. And I want to inform you ladies on how important it is to increase our faith to grow closer to the Lord. As women, it's our duty to set a foundation of faith onto our families and friends. We go to Mass every Sunday and even during the week, but that shouldn't be our limit in worshiping our Lord. It's important for us to exceed that in venturing out into our community. We're so accustomed to one-on-one -on -one prayer with God that we forget that sometimes we have to be inclusive with those around us. Throughout the weekend, that is what we strive for. Bonding and sharing with all the beautiful women in our parish. A day and a half of your time may be much for some, but the outcome is worth it in the end. Trust me, you won't regret it. Think of it as a vacation with Jesus from the outside world and a time to renew yourself and start fresh. Just like we all take vacations with our families to wind down and to renew ourselves, let's do the same here. With everything going on in our lives every day, it can be very distracting and most of the time makes us stray away from Jesus. So this retreat is to help you reconnect and come back down to earth. We all need a renewal. We need to not allow the trivial things in life to stop us from seeing the bigger picture, and that is Jesus. I want all of you to take this as an opportunity to give our Lord the same amount of time he gives us. And with that, speaking in my personal experience, because I don't want it to seem like, you know, I'm just reading a script here when I'm not. But um, I first attended the retreat two and a half years ago. And I have to say, I am definitely not the same person I was two and a half years ago, that's for sure. And I think it's really important to just bond with everyone in church, because, you know, you sit in the pews at Mass, and, you know, you see the same people sitting next to you, and you're just like, oh, hi, bye, but you don't, do you really take the initiative to really get to know everyone? And I thought about that. And when I was first asked to do the retreat, I was like, okay, yeah, sure. And ever since then, I've been completely involved. And I have to say that it's, it would be a void in my life if I wasn't involved. And I have to say that spiritually, you'll grow a lot. And I'm telling you that from experience. And it's ironic because I was thinking about that before Mass started. And someone approached me before mass started and said, oh, I remember you when you were little and like you grew up and um, I've seen a lot of spiritual maturity and growth in you. And I was just like, okay. So I was just, ironically, I was thinking about that beforehand and she told me that and I was just like really honored because that's really fulfilling for me. And I think the reason why we put so much emphasis on this retreat is because of the impact that it does have on everyone. And I have to say, like, it's it's very beautiful. And if you haven't attended the retreat before, I highly recommend that you do. So the women's retreat is September 8th and 9th. 
and my fellow sisters in Christ, you see us wearing red, you're probably like, oh my goodness, these women in red are bug yes again. But <laughs> we'll be in the back of the church. We'll be handing out um, sign-up sheets and save the date cards. So just think about it, pray on it, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask one of us. Don't be shy. Trust me, I was shy before, and now I'm just like, okay. So trust me, it's worth it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, we would like to reiterate our uh, campaign for more Catholics in our parish. So if you would like to share your faith uh, to the young, uh, to the youth, and uh, to the adults, please sign up for our uh, catechetical program. You may get in touch with Dolly. It's in the bulletin also her number there. Um, go call her and volunteer. And our vocations crucifix will go to Marie um, Miranda. Marie, receive the vocations crucifix and pray for vocations to the priesthood, permanent diaconate, for all the religious life, and for all married couples. Pray most especially for our seminarian Francisco and our deacon candidate uh, Dominic, and for Dolly, who has been recently accepted. <coughs> In the religious life. May your prayers be very much for Thank you. Please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Oh,